Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're traveling to Montreal and we'd like to share some insights about this wonderful European pocket in the middle of North America. It's a place with a booming economy, diverse culture and the language that most North Americans don't really understand. Oui, oui. In this video, we will expand on three main aspects of Montreal. Its culture and vibe of the city, industries and job opportunities that exist here, and of course, the cost of living. Where I'm at right now is my favorite part of the town. It's the Southwest Montreal. It has my favorite coffee shop where we used to grab a cup of the smoothest coffee ever. I grabbed the most delicious avocado toast there as well. And then I go for a walk and chill at the canal to enjoy the sunlight, the fresh air, and a good book. And then I'd probably meet some friends for fresh lunch at the Atwater Market. And then we'd go for a stroll around the park where we'd find a really nice bar to dive into and grab a couple of drinks. Those are the good old times, but I want to show you a lot more of Montreal than that. In order to understand Montreal's culture, it's important to look into its past, to understand how it shaped the city as it is today. Montreal, or Montréal, pardon my French, is the second largest city in Canada. It was the most populous one for over 100 years, until it passed its reign to Toronto, of course. But what caused Montreal to lag behind Toronto in the 80s? We'll talk about it in just a few minutes. Back in the 19th century, Montreal was actually the capital of the United Provinces of Canada. All the way up until the rioters decided to set fire to the Parliament building in Montreal in 1849, right here on this soil. The riots continued for eight years, so the capital alternated between Quebec City and Toronto, all the way up until the Queen Victoria at some point just said, enough. And as a result, the capital was established in Ottawa, almost perfectly in between the Quebec City and Toronto. If you haven't Googled that already, the name of Montreal comes from the name of the mountain that's literally placed in the middle of the city. And this mountain has such a big significance to the city that Montrealers issued a law forbidding anyone from building a building taller than the mountain, or 233 meters. That is why the city of Montreal doesn't look so big, even though it's the second largest city in Canada. And this observation point is the best place to look at the beauty of Montreal. We love Montreal for its unique blend that represents the unique mixture of European and North American culture. Everyone coming to Montreal notices this beautiful mixture of old and new, with sky and concrete skyscrapers standing tall to the 18th century old buildings. You can appreciate such contrast to the fullest by taking a stroll along the old port in the afternoon or looking back at Montreal's skyline. Or you could walk along some of the Montreal central streets like St. Catherine or René Lévesque. If you want to completely lose sight of the modern, you should definitely take a stroll on the Notre Dame, St. Paul Street, or any other street really in the Old Port. We will caution you, though, that you might forget you are in North America for a second. Cobblestone streets, narrow alleyways and cute restaurants with French murmurs will transport you straight into Europe. The crowd here in Montreal is pretty laid back. They like contemplating about life, they enjoy every moment and don't worry about much. I think you can always assess the pace of life in the city simply by looking at how people walk around. The bigger the city, the more you see people constantly rushing to get somewhere. Geography and climate play a big role in Montreal's culture too. In fact, Montreal is built on an island and is completely surrounded by water. <laughs> This, among other reasons, makes Montreal pretty windy and freezing cold, with temperatures changing suddenly and drastically. Winter here spans from late November to mid-March, with approximately 2 meters of snow per year. Such rough climate is one of the main reasons why Montreal roads are in such a bad condition, with potholes, patches on the road, 
and construction happening here all year round. Road work is so endless in Montreal that Montrealers came up with the saying that there are only two seasons in Montreal, winter and construction. And Montreal, being the arts city, also looks for creative ways to handle construction. To hide from those cold temperatures and potholes, the city of Montreal has built the whole underground system called Réseau, and it covers the whole area of downtown. It connects office towers, hotels, shopping centers, universities, performing arts venues. This underground city spares humans from having to come outside during cold winters. You can spend hours here without ever going outside, so don't be surprised if you don't see any people outside in winter in Montreal, because everybody is underground. So we were just shooting here randomly, and it turns out there is an art festival going on. It'll be here until 30th of June. So if you're in Montreal, go check it out. And as for the summers, People enjoy summers to the fullest here because they try to enjoy every single warm day they have. Montreal metropolitan area has over 1300 parks and people love to go out there, have picnics, grab drinks, doing slackline and just simply taking strolls with friends. <sighs> Montreal is famous for its summer events, festivals and concerts. There is always something going on here on the weekends in summer. And if you feel like getting out of the city, we definitely recommend you this place, Cité du Havre. Montreal's Just Fest and Just for Laughs are probably the best examples of Montreal's arts and culture scene. We're actually on the square that is used to set up stages for the major events. And a huge chunk of St. Catherine Street has become pedestrian and welcomes vibrant Montreal inhabitants during the events. And if you're into sports, you can also check out F1, NHL, or Rogers Tennis Cup. You won't be disappointed. Many immigrants say that Canada, or even entire North America, lack history and culture. And it's mostly true. However, we would definitely say that Montreal comes pretty close to some European counterparts, especially when it comes to culture and arts. Students also have a huge impact on the life of Montreal. Montreal has the highest student population in the entire North America, with 350,000 students flocking to the city every year to pursue their post-secondary degrees. Behind me is my alma mater, Concordia University. It has over 30 buildings spanning across downtown area. When I went to school here, I literally lived on this intersection. It has everything you need. School, food, rest, libraries, just anything you need as a student. And parties too. There are two reasons why Montreal is so popular among students. The reason number one is affordable housing and the low cost of living for such a big metropolitan area in such a diverse city like Montreal. And the second reason is the low tuition fees because tuition is subsidized by the Quebec government and is the lowest in the entire North America. Such a concentrated presence of students certainly creates a special energy and culture in the city. Vibrant, energetic and always ready to rebel. In general, this historic spirit of rebellion and independence runs deep throughout the province and its city. And you'll often see flyers and signs announcing protests, strikes and fundraisers around issues both global and local. And I feel like French language has a lot to do with it. All right. We haven't talked about French language all the way up until this moment in this video. How could we? Okay, let's talk about it now. So the moment you find yourself anywhere in Quebec, you realize that French is everywhere. All the signs and billboards, everything is in French. And if you ask someone for directions, they will respond in French. Oui, oui. The French language is such an important part of Quebec's identity that learning English is in fact not encouraged by the government. The French and the English never really got along on the Canadian soil. In fact, there's a monument dedicated to the internal discontent between these two cultures. And it's located right here at the Place d'Armes. 
And at the first sight, this monument is not really noticeable. Let's take a closer look. On the south corner of the tower, there is an Englishman, represented as a thin and elegant Englishman, wearing a bow tie, a grid pattern suit, and he's pressing a pug firmly to his chest. And he stares with condescension at the Notre Dame de Basilica, a symbol of religious dominance of the Catholic Church in Quebec. On the north side of the tower, there is a French lady, represented as this elegant, small, and snooty lady wearing a Chanel-style suit, high heel shoes, and she's pressing a French poodle tightly against her chest. And she's looking with discontent at the Bank of Montreal, which represents the capitalistic British Empire. Moral of the story, animals are the best. They don't care about nations and politics. Their heart leads them. Before we come back to talking about French language, we want to show you something. This right here is a special square because it has several important buildings. This right here is the first skyscraper in Montreal. And this right here is the first Bank of Canada, Bank of Montreal. And this right here, oh, this is just the Notre Dame de Paris wannabe. So in 1977, Quebec passed the infamous Bill 101, which reinforced the French language as the only official government language in the province. It reinforces the right for any worker to work in French, as well as every consumer in Quebec to be served in French. All the public services in Quebec are also operating in the French language. What this means in practice is that if you're an Anglophone who's trying to get a driver's license in Quebec or get a help from a doctor or just simply go and order food and drinks at a bar, you might end up with someone who doesn't speak English. And it's actually not that uncommon to be served in French only. They might even tell you they don't understand English at all and you don't have any choice. Oui, oui. And the life hack that I'll share with you guys on that is if you're going to Montreal and you want to hang out at a bar or a restaurant, make sure you learn a couple of words in French so that when you're placing your order, you're speaking in French. It will go a long way. Ever since 1977, French language has been reinforced in pretty much every aspect of everyday life. Businesses, education, everyday life and services. And through numerous amendments to the Bill 101, French language has been further reinforced into businesses, meaning that businesses have to replace their English names on commercial signs and translate their websites into French even though they work with Anglophone clients. The French ministry has frequently been accused of abusing its powers. And the most iconic example of that occurred several years ago when an Italian restaurant was asked to translate words like calamari, pasta, pizza into French. All that despite the fact that nobody actually uses French words for Italian dishes. Such heavy reinforcement of French language and Quebec sovereignty movements in the late 20s drove some of the wealthiest and most educated people out of the province, including headquarters of the largest Canadian corporations. But what caused Montreal to lag behind Toronto in the 80s? Now you know what happened. Bill 101 happened, and a series of other unfortunate events that we'll touch up on a little bit later. But before that, let's talk about Montreal's economy and what career aspirations Montreal is best for. Over the mid-20th century, Montreal has made its name as a center for trade thanks to its strategic position from the Atlantic Ocean all the way inland towards the Great Lakes. At the dawn of the 1960s, Montreal was Canada's business capital Financial, manufacturing and the textile industries as well as the natural resources were thriving in Montreal all the way up until they didn't, because of the Bill 101 happening and the globalization happening and bringing a lot more imports from Asia and hurting the manufacturing and the textile industries in Montreal. Such government subsidies have also largely extended into the technology sector over the recent years. And fueled by venture capital investments, Montreal has experienced a boom in tech startups. From clean tech and life sciences to cybersecurity and cloud computing, and artificial intelligence deserves a special mention from us. When Montreal's economy tried to reinvent itself, it shifted from traditional manufacturing-based to knowledge and technology-based economy. 
Industries such as aerospace gained importance thanks to aircraft maker Bombardier. And also investments picked up in pharmaceuticals and personal care. One of the most exciting industries for me in Montreal is video games, VFX and 3D and animation. That's what initially attracted me to Montreal back in the day when I wanted to become a 3D animator. Montreal is the North American capital of game development. It houses over 200 game development studios like Eidos, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, and so many more. Anastasia wants to take me to bagel shop. It smells good. Is it from Putin? No. What's the secret of Montreal's success? Tax credits. The province of Quebec offers multimedia companies subsidies for employing people in the province. Taxes of Quebec's taxpayers go to salaries of those people working in those multimedia companies. Actually, taxes deserve a separate mention and we'll get to it in time. Technology in general is a very lucrative and a rapidly growing sector in Montreal with over a million jobs created so far. It is home to such offices like Microsoft, Google, IBM, Shopify and so many more. Microsoft, Google and Facebook have established themselves even more in Montreal over the last couple of years because they've established their own artificial intelligence research labs here. Why Montreal of all places, you might ask? One of the reasons is that Montreal has the world's largest concentration of academic research and deep learning. Montreal specifically has become number one in Canada in AI and deep learning research, with over $3 billion floating into the Montreal economy to support this research. But what about French language? Ah. French again. I thought we've already covered it. Okay, well, you can certainly survive in Montreal without French language, but we would highly recommend you learn French so that you can easily get around the city, order food and make new friends and utilize the public services here. When I moved to Montreal, I learned French and I made some friends in French and I even held two jobs using French language. But ever since I took my first office job in technology space, I did not have to use French at all and it was just fine with English. Generally speaking, if you work in technology and hold any non-customer facing role, you're not really required to speak French and you can get by with English only just fine. However, if you want to work in public service or any customer facing role like customer service representative, marketing or communications, you will have to learn French because that's the first language of the public in Quebec. My personal advice for you is to invest into learning French in Montreal. The choice is yours. You can get by just fine with English and without ever speaking a word in French. If you're okay with feeling like a second class citizen every now and then. But if you learn French, you will surely enjoy your life in Montreal to the fullest. Apart from culture, what attracts many people to Montreal is its low cost of living. In fact, Montreal is the cheapest city to live in among the top 10 largest cities in Canada. A one-bedroom apartment, for instance, will cost you around $1,000, and a transit pass will be just about 100 bucks. Think about how much it is in Toronto. And then the utilities in Quebec are among the cheapest, thanks to the Hydro-Quebec, which has been nationalized decades ago. And the grocery bills will definitely not be any more expensive than any other city in Canada. We must highlight, though, that Montreal also has the lowest income among the top 10 largest cities in Canada. An average household income in Montreal will come out to be around $60,000 for this household, which is around 100 grand per family per year. This is mostly because of the large student population that flocks to the city and takes up on-campus jobs, part-time jobs or low-wage jobs. We think that the rebellion and anti-establishment spirit of Montrealers has something to do with not so high income levels in Montreal, mostly because they have probably so much better things to do and more important things to do than working all day and night long. Another thing that affects your income after tax is tax. 
you already know that some of the common Fox tax goes on tax credits for video game companies. But in Montreal, your tax dollars go a lot further than that. The province of Quebec has the highest income tax rate in the entire Canada. And those extra taxes cover a wide range of services that other provinces do not. When I tried to find out why Quebec taxes are so high, well, Google search results weren't that helpful. Now I wonder if the fact that Quebec has been named the most corrupt province in Canada has anything to do with it. Anyways, here are some of the reasons why Quebec tax is so high. First, it's education. We've already talked about the Quebec tuition being the lowest in the entire North America. That's largely thanks to the Quebecois taxpayers. Quebec also has a solidarity tax credit that's distributed to individuals with low income. Daycare is also subsidized by the Quebec government. Quebec parents pay as low as $7 per day per daycare, while the Canadian average can range anywhere between $30 all the way to up to $90. And since Quebec so heavily focuses on preserving the French language, they also have their own French office, so taxpayers are also paying for the language police. And lastly, since Quebec considers itself separate from the rest of Canada, they also have their own Ministry for Health, Immigration, International Relations and Tax that Quebec taxpayers pay for. Thank you so much for watching! Hope you like this new format of the video, because we dedicated a lot of time making it. So I hope you learned something new today about culture of the city, main industries and job opportunities, and of course cost of living. Let us know if you have something to add to what was said, and let us know if you would like to learn something more about Montreal. And as usual, if you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button below and subscribe to this channel, because more videos like this are coming. We would love to travel more, explore the beautiful country of Canada, and visit more cities. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers!